back here. All right, I've got us muted. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. This is our first afternoon session. We were going to do it at 3, but we were outsourcing and didn't get back till late, so we pushed it out till 3.30. But I think normally if we do an afternoon session, we'll try to start it at about 3. Um, we do have to go in about 30 minutes, so we're going to make it quick. But how are you guys doing today? Hi. Hello. Welcome from West Michigan. Looking forward to the chat. Michigan. Yay. Let us know if you guys can hear us. I will warn you, I had a wisdom tooth removed, so. She sounds like poop. Yeah. It looks like a <laughs> I'm gonna let Nikki do most of the talking and I will be writing on the board here, but. Hi, everybody. We're gonna play a keywords game today. This was pretty popular during our morning session. And so we thought that we would do it uh, one more for our first afternoon session. Hey everybody. We've got only three items and then because we have limited time, we'll do three items and then we will jump to Q&A. Um, in case there's anybody that hasn't been able to join us for a live Q&A, you guys can ask questions. It doesn't have to be related to the keywords. keywords. Yeah, just anything resale related. Hey everybody. Hi. I'm seeing some regulars here from the morning session too, so that's cool. All Ready? Right. How many people we got? 19. Do we have a black? Oh, here it is. I was told the last time. Oh, thank you, Tanya. That's so nice. Thank you so much. We got a super chat. Woo, thank you. I was told um, the last uh, whiteboard live we did that any color but black was not showing up very well and it was kind of hard to read so okay. I'll, I'll try to remember to, to write and black. yeah i'll try to remember to stick with black marker hey from jersey hi hey everybody all right well we got 20 people watching so we'll get started because like i said we have some limited time so nikki's going to pop up an item and the way the game works is you guys just literally type into the chat some keywords that you would use for this item all right, so this is a dress. It's kind of hard for me to show you at first, but this is a dress. It is a Torridge dress. It is new with tags. It is size 22. You can see it has um, these like floral patterns with like a mesh background. It is sleeveless. I'll try to, do you want me to drop this down maybe? Put it over here a little bit so y'all can see the end of it. Looks good. I wouldn't go too low. So if we get close to it. So I'm going to hang it right here so y'all can see it to think some ideas. We have cocktail blush champagne. I would call this like a blush color, yes. Cocktail's a good one. Cocktail's a good one. It is sleeveless. Did you say blush? Blush, yes. Chrome pink cocktail mini. A-line. Prom. I don't know. I, wouldn't call I don't know if I would say prom, but I would say like formal, maybe or event. Feminine. Neutral. You could call this kind of neutral because it's it's kind of middle of the line color wise and. I spell that right. It's an E and U, right? Cocktail's a really good one because it's kind of, you know, it's an event-ish dress, but it, I wouldn't say it's too super formal. Formal. We use that homecoming. Homecoming's a good one. Be a good one. You could do floral since it has a floral background. You could do like flowy since it does have ruffles to it. Wide strap. Romantic. One. Ooh, I like romantic. I like romantic. That's good. I think we mentioned sleeveless. Yep. So I've run out of room, but I will say that the tag itself um, does say like somewhat of a style name. 
And if it does have a style name, we try to include that. And this the, has skater listed. Skater. That would be another yeah. another one you could use is skater. It is a skater dress. It's a really popular term as well. All right. Good job, everybody. Breathable, yeah, or lightweight. It is not, uh, Jacqueline, it is not velvet textured. It does, definitely does look to it or look like it, but it's like a rayon, a rayon. But I honestly, when I saw this at first too, I thought that it was velvet as well. Pastel, that would be a good one. Pretty good one. Peach. Gonna, yeah, those moment. are good ones. I'm gonna step back for a moment before I erase. If anybody wants to screenshot this in the video, you saw a keyword that you like. All right, and we'll move on to the next one. It's cute. It is Jacqueline. I really like it. I'm not a, I'm not a pale colored person. Like I typically like to go with like really bright, vibrant colors. But I thought it was really cute. I think that it would be a really cute, like, I don't know, cocktail dress or wedding. Guess. Wedding. Yeah. Yeah, something very springish. You could put spring in that even because I wouldn't really call it summery. I mean, it is the sleeveless. You could probably get away with it in summer, but I definitely think spring is really. It's skin toned on me. Yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel you on that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move to the next item. This is a. Oh, I'll move this down. Lauren Ralph Lauren women's 3X top. It is silk linen blend, if that helps you. This kind of shows you the pattern to it. It does not have any buttons or anything, if you guys are curious. It's just a V-neck. It is long sleeved. I'll show you guys the sleeves a little. So you guys can use that for some of your keywords. And I'll hang it right here on the board. So y'all can see it. All right, let's get started. First things first, Western, yes. Aztec, V-neck. Aztec again, good call. Boho. I don't know if I'd call that boho. I think it could be boho. Maybe, okay. Yeah, I could see like the eclectic kind of like multicolor. Um, Southwest. That's a good one. Plus sized, lightweight. Tunic. Well, I wrote black marker, but now I'm writing so fast you might not be able to read my handwriting. Um, flowy. Rustic. I kind of like rustic. When I think of like linen-y things, I do typically think of rustic. Like this seems kind of old-timey to me. Um, oversized, because it's flowy. Green label, yeah, you could put that, especially not necessarily green label with, with Ralph Lauren, but there are some that you would definitely want to specify, like black label, if this was black label, you probably want to put so. Um, pleated neckline, it does have some pleats up here. It is semi-sheer, uh, maybe not. I think it looks like it in the light, but when you actually see it with your hand under it, not, but yes, close, boxy linen blend yeah you definitely want to put the silk and the linen in there for sure just because it definitely plays a part um you could put yep festival festival not festival festival could be a good one you could even do like indian i don't know if you guys can tell or native american but it has like the native american like birds aztec birds in there it's really cool so we do these keyword games to kind of help everybody, but I just wanted to point out, you know, typically when you're using the word Western, you probably want to also apply Aztec, Southwestern, Bohemians, another good one. Like there's just a lot of words that kind of go together. And that's what that keywords document is, are just keyword strings of frequently paired together words. So just something to keep in mind as you're uh, learning to resell, learning to use keywords, try to think of ones that kind of frequently go together so you can make sure to include them all in your listing. I feel like I wish I could pull off things like this, but again, even though it's bright, not my, not my style to wear it. All right. Oh, wait, let me give you a moment. Three-quarter sleeve, that would be a good one. We didn't even talk about sleeve length, long sleeve. 
three quarter sleeve. I don't, I think this one might actually be long sleeve, but it definitely looks like it's shorter. I think just because it's plus sized. But yes, I would definitely make sure to mention sleeve length. Uh, we already talked about like the neck, V neck. Hello. Hi. Hello, little Miss Nat. How are you? <laughs> Welcome to the chat. All right, guys, we have one more and then we'll jump to the table to answer any questions that you guys might have, but make sure to drop them in the comments and we'll go back through. Yes, so get those ready. We'll do the last item for today. And then if you all have any questions, feel free to spring them on us then and we'll answer any questions that you guys have for today. So this is a pair of Fabletics leggings. They are like a compression like material. You can see the logo here, hello. These are a size medium if i can get in here they are new with tags these are apparently called a sink high-waisted perforated seven eighth leg leggings they are moisture wicking and breathable and chafe free i feel like a q what is it qvc qrc yeah, whatever that is qvc selling them leggings all right um did i just make it to a live you did yay! yay bugsy says workout gym yoga workout gym yoga active wear athleisure you like nailed this bugsy way to go Um, a wide waistband maybe banded waist that's a good one wide waist stretchable or stretch either of those words work either of those words would work new with tag that would also work tommy you're crazy runner yeah i technically use like gym run like um you use compression on these one I, like. I would not call these retail uniforms. Y'all, we try to be so serious up in here, and you guys just keep going with off-the-wall stuff. I guess these aren't seamless. I was about to say these are, like, very seamless-like, but they yeah. do have seams, so. Sometimes that adds a lot of value, too. Yeah. So I would definitely make sure to check them for seamless to see if that if that is an option for them, because I know that does typically add value. Um, these are not mesh. These are like, I don't know, more of like an eyelet. If you can tell that in, in the picture here. But they're more of like an eyelet. Kind um, of mushy, I guess. These do not have pockets. No, but that could be That's something that you point. could definitely add. Is if it has pockets or not. I'm going to add 7, 8 crop. Yeah. Ankle to it. Um, you could do breathable still. You could do moisture wick. Ruched, you could do ruched if they had ruching on them. Sometimes, I guess these have a little They're bit. A little bit, yeah. Those are really good. Good job, guys. It's a really good option. All right, is that the end of the keywords? Mm -hmm. All right, we are going to take you guys over to the table. And if you guys want to chat or have any questions, we've got about 15 minutes. We'd be happy to hang out with you guys. Let me erase this real quick. Be careful which way you turn. Yeah. I'll take it with me. <laughs> Sorry, making sure not to put people in here that we don't want. But you know what? Why did I do that? Let's turn this around. Back to the dungeon table. I feel like everybody's got to see a lot more of the office lately. Yeah, we've been taking them around everywhere. All right, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. We thought that we would at least get on for a little bit today. We planned on getting back at three, but, you know, we drive aways and construction and, you know, all that shenanigans. Plus, we went to the last door and we did pretty good there, so we ended up running behind as usual. So... 
Um, we always like coming back and doing the keyword um, keyword games with you guys because I know it helps us to kind of go yeah. over everything and to um, really, I guess, think of some things. I know sometimes the words I use are words Kaylee wouldn't use or vice versa, so it's really nice that we have we have that as an option. Yeah. Bugsy, do you have, do you guys have a video on returns on eBay? I know it's inevitable that I receive one and I'm the type of person that likes to plan ahead. I'd love a video showing what returns look like. We have a lot sometimes. Like it seems like it's like an ebb and flow of, we actually got to the point where we didn't have any, but on average yeah. we typically have somewhere between like five and 10, which seems like a lot, but yeah. in reality with what we're shipping out, it's, it's not. Um, but I don't think you have I don't, one, do you? Yeah, I don't think I have, a like, a dedicated video about returns. Sorry, guys. It's going to take me a moment to get my syllables out. But um, I do have a video that is, like, about scammers. And so there's, like, a little bit about returns in there. We could definitely probably make one, though. Um, but do you have a specific question on returns? It's kind of hard to... I guess give advice if I don't know your situations. I don't, it looks like you uh, haven't had one yet. The first thing is, do you want to accept returns? Because on eBay, you can choose, mm -hmm. do you want to accept them or do you not? Um, and then do you want to make the buyer pay for return shipping or will you pay for that? In my opinion, this is just how we do it, but a buyer can kind of force what's called a free return. A free return just means you offer returns and then you pay for the shipping back. That's offering free returns. In my opinion, you might as well just offer for returns because anybody can force it anyways and force you to pay the return shipping. So you might as well offer it because you get a certain discount by offering that. And then also if you do offer free returns, then you have the opportunity to do what's known as a like a deduction Mm -hmm. And so if you get the return back and let's say you shipped it out new with tags, it comes back, it's not new with tags, you have the opportunity through eBay's return system then to only refund the buyer 50% and you can basically deduct up to 50%, but you can only do that if you're offering free returns. Um, we choose to offer free returns. We feel like it's just the best customer service. And then, like I said, they can force you to do it anyways, um, but the process is really simple. They just create a return through eBay. eBay handles really the communication back and forth with that, and then they send them the shipping label. Um, once you get the item back, you just go on to orders, returns, and then you can choose to refund them, and from there you can choose to either relist or not relist so we could probably definitely do a video if that helps he said he's yeah. just mostly looking for visuals if possible just to kind of see what it looks like and walking through it we could definitely do that here as soon as we have some more returns pop up we gotta <laughs> wait for those to come back in but we've uh we've also been talking about doing a lot more videos just regarding the ebay seller hub and doing a visual of like what each of those tabs looks like so we could throw it in but hopefully just spitting that out is a little bit helpful to you yeah um, after you fill in the title line, how many keywords do you place in the description? So after we fill out the title with all, I think Doyle, I think you were on the last one we did, including titles. It's just however many characters we have left. So we make sure to include, um, like the brand, the gender, the brief description of the item, the size, and then whatever we have left after that, we will do whatever amount of characters left. We'll do keywords with. Um, sometimes that's like five keywords, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's seven, just depends on how much room we end up having left, but we just do that essentially to fill the extra characters, um, on the title and make the item more findable, um, or I guess searchable, but there is no specific amount of how many we do. Um, Lil Miss Nat and e any eBay shipping advice, use calculated shipping, make sure you yeah. like actually weigh your items don't guess and don't just ship everything in like a flat rate because you could save money that's my advice yeah i don't i don't know if you're new to shipping on ebay but we do have a couple of videos regarding ebay shipping so if you look into that um on our channel hopefully that's helpful to you but if uh 
if you're asking that, I assume you're kind of new to eBay shipping, but the best advice that I can give, besides what Nikki just said, is just to get in there and like try it. Like that's that's the best way to learn it. That's the best way to learn what's the cheapest. You know, what you should avoid is just by getting in there and unfortunately probably making some mistakes. Yeah, that's the worst part is the mistakes, <laughs> but you have to make some. And honestly, like I've learned more from just testing them out. I mean, the Bugsy brought up like returns. The first couple of times I did, I had no clue what I was doing. The best thing you can do is just kind of buckle into it, click some buttons and see what happens. Um, and just be kind of patient with yourself. If you make mistakes, you will make some, I still do. But I think the best thing is, is looking at it. So, um, I think it's been mentioned somewhere before, but is it true that unlike Posh, eBay only pulls keywords from the title and item specifics, not the description? Yes. eBay does not use the description, the like actual large description box. It's not searchable unless you click to add that specifically so buyers can choose to search with that but it's not auto rated or auto set up to automatically pull the way that poshmark is and don't worry about other questions that's why we're here we love answering your questions yeah little miss Nat. let me just go back um to that you said that shipping makes you nervous you don't know the difference between ground and priority sometimes it comes out expensive I would definitely watch our videos on um, on eBay shipping. I don't know. Uh, I guess after this video post, I can probably go back and put it in the description if you keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, you can just kind of search Kaylee Elaine eBay shipping and you'll see a couple of them pop up. I have one that's very detailed. That's kind of an older video that explains everything. I have another one that's um, kind of brief. And then there's a couple ship with me's. But if you're selling clothing, I would stick to probably for 99% of the time priority mail in first class. Mm -hmm. We hardly ever use ground unless we are shipping like a big item. Something or, massive. Yeah, something heavy or like a home goods item, which we don't frequently do. Um, but typically your cheapest option is going to be first class and then priority if it's too heavy. But. If you don't know too, you can always just literally go to eBay and like click down the options. So like think about buying something. So even if you went to somebody else's listing and looked at what your options were for purchasing that, you can generally see what the price differences are or go to just like USPS website and see how much the, the options are for shipping. Even if you just generically go in, like you're buying a label to print online, you can actually see what ends up being cheaper and you might figure out what your best option is. But as Kaylee said, 90% of the time, if it's under a pound, we always just use first class. And then if it fits in padded, we go in padded from there. If you're shipping something other than clothing, that might be a little difficult, but I would, I would definitely, definitely check for those videos and I'll try to remember to put them in the description for you. Have you utilized eBay's catch a flip to help determine cost point? I don't sell on eBay, but have found this helpful. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Me either. I was <laughs> like, uh... uh, I don't know. Are you talking about like where in the listing it kind of estimates, um, mm. like what your price might be? Is that what you're talking about? I've just never Evelyn. heard the catch a flip. Let us know in the comments. We've not, I I'm not familiar with that. Maureen wants to know in regards to search, is it okay to use WHBM instead of White House Black Market because of the number of characters? A friend gave me four bags of clothing. Thank you. I wouldn't. I let's, wouldn't use it. Let's test it. Go to eBay. Let's see Here, what we come up here's with. Here's how you find out you go to eBay and you go to, let's say you want to search. We're just going to use tops as an example. So let's search White House Black Market Women's Top. All right, let us see. So to start out with, we have 21,000 results. That's mm -hmm. a lot. Now let's go to W. Hold on, I want to filter to sold to see what the solds are. Oh, okay. Because just because more are listed in, yeah. more are listed in sold or in White House Black Market. So there's 6,900 plus results for White House Black Market. Spelled out. Spelled out. Out of like 11,000. White House Black Market. Now we're doing WHBM. And there's 67. So 6,700, sorry. I should now specify. Let's check the but available. 
I would say that soles are pretty compare. <laughs> soles are pretty comparable. Hold on, I gotta go back because I hit the wrong button. Yeah, so it was 21,000 to 20,000 active. And then 60, what did I say, 69 to 6,700. Um, so they are pretty similar um, as far as listings go. If I were you, I would look at exactly the specific item that you have. So like, I don't know, if you have a specific dress, maybe there's a style number on it that you can search. And I would honestly search it both ways for comps to see what has the most or like the best sell through rate. You could also use that to see what has the best sell through price yeah. too. So I would search both. It seems like it seems like they're both good search terms. I would just make sure whenever you do the drop downs, make sure you choose white house black market spelled out. Don't type in W H B M B M. Yeah, make sure when you do the drop down, you select the full thing. But it seems like the search terms are pretty comparable. And like Nikki said, I would just. Uh, search it for each item yeah I would I would definitely comp both ways because there might be some items specifically that it might be more important for you to have like a specific keyword for that dress or like style name for the dress or top or pants whatever it is versus the whole name spelled out but you might find some other times that it's better to use the whole thing um, is it rare that you receive feedback on eBay? I am new and have sold three things. I haven't received any feedback. I, it looks terrible that I'm at 0%. I guess I should be patient. Yes, be patient. Kaylee and I kind of have this theory that if you like keep reaching out to your people to like ask them to leave you feedback, you might be reminding them of like a bad experience and you might not want to remind them of those things. Um, so I would definitely just send your items, have feedback on, don't send reminders. And then those, you know, who really appreciate what they got will reach out to you when it's time. Um, but I would just, I would be patient, let it happen as it happens and it will come with time. Yeah. The best kind of feedback is like authentic. It comes naturally and you will develop that over time as you start to sell more items. Um, definitely in the beginning we, we we were all new at one point. We all started with zero feedback. Now we have, I don't even know, over a thousand, maybe even over 2000. I haven't looked at it in a while, but it definitely comes with time. I wouldn't like heavily focus on it. One tip I do have for you, if you're trying to get feedback, is to try and lean into um, a strength. For us, that's fast shipping. We get a lot of feedback about fast shipping. So if you're capable of, you know, shipping really fast lean into that to i guess amaze your buyers and get them to want to naturally leave feedback if you're really good at packaging um if you're really good at customer service like just lean into at least one thing to really wow in one category and you'll probably more than likely get feedback pretty quickly jacqueline i would just stick with nydj i think not your daughter jean spelled out was like an old school thing um, i know a lot of like the old tags will have it spelled out inside but the newer ones typically just say nydj and it is a drop down on ebay as well bye have a good day see you sorry our people are leaving yeah it's, she wanted to tell her bye it's four o'clock which is closing time we gotta go <laughs> So, <laughs> I have to go take medication. We're going to get off of here unless anybody has any more questions. But I think, I think that was it, yes? Some days I don't know how I make it. <laughs> I think that's it, everybody. I noticed on your Poshmark listings you don't fill out style tags. Not trying to call you out. Just curious why you don't. We don't mind being called out. You can call us out. We're pretty yeah. transparent. Um the style tags we occasionally do use style tags but just in general we are using poshmark as a secondary platform not to say we're like not trying to get the best results over there but it is almost like an afterthought because we're cross posting from ebay to poshmark and we want to just make it a very seamless process we include a bunch of keywords in our description. So for me, that's our style tags. I don't feel the need to go back and add more. 
um, because they're kind of limited on the ones that you can choose. If I'm on there and I think about it, we do include style tags on some of them, but just in general, we don't really make it a priority because we have so many keywords um, in our description. Do I need to have one day shipping and 30 day returns to make daily sales? I list regularly. I would say give it time first thing before you're like worrying about like flipping shipping times or looking at returns or whatever that looks like stick with the consistency first because it's kind of hard to make a decision on what's going to make the biggest change other than consistency and time yeah but we do offer returns and we do have business one business day shipping turnaround yeah. i mean i would say those things wouldn't hurt you they could only help you but just make sure you're capable of yes it. make sure that you're actually going to consistently stick with that because if you don't it's going to hurt you versus help yeah as nikki said your best bet if you want to increase sales is to just list more consistently that's going to give you a better return in the long run than switching to a one day business handling time um, but yeah, can't hurt. All right, guys. Well, we're going to get off of here. Sorry it was a short one, but thank you guys for being here. 59 people watching, 23 thumbs up. If you guys would give us a thumbs up before we get off of here, take a second and do that. We will try to do more afternoon sessions, um, probably about 3 o'clock, and we'll probably try to come up with a schedule soon. All right. Say. We'll see you all next time. We're going to go take a nap now. <laughs> Bye. Bye.